the Galactic Star Cruiser is a hot mess. It's a hot mess. <laughs> Disney is pulling promotional videos from, from the internet. People are canceling the reservations. It's a total cluster <laughs> right now. But you know what? I'm not going to focus on the negative. In this video, we're going to talk about how to be more constructive on how to fix this big mess Disney ha has on their hands. We're going to talk about it right now. Hey everybody, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard to another episode of Orange Grove 55. So in this video, um, I'm going to talk about the Galactic Star Cruiser, but you know, look, there's a, a, a thousand videos on YouTube about talking about what a, what a shit show, basically, uh, the Galactic Star Cruiser is. And I don't want this video to be that. I, I want it to be a little bit more um, constructive. You know, I want to kind of kind of focus now on the future and how to fix it. So I was watching a great video yesterday, uh, Fresh Baked, and it's their podcast, which, by the way, I highly recommend everyone watching. Check out uh, the Fresh Baked podcast starring Ron Berner and Dave from Fresh Baked. I'm a huge fan of both of them, but Ron especially, he has a lot of great insight. And I was really inspired by this podcast that they did the other day. It's absolutely fantastic. So I'll link it down below. You guys can definitely check it out. It's worth watching. Um, if you're not subscribed to Fresh Baked, then you definitely you, <laughs> you got to do that. Hit that subscribe button because they do great work. But this podcast in particular, they do it like once a week. And I'm a huge fan. But I was watching this the other day. And they were talking about some of the problems in terms of the Galactic Star Cruiser. And I kind of wanted to kind of throw my hat in the ring in regards to this. Okay, so here's the thing. It's no secret that this whole thing with the Galactic Star Cruiser is a total mess right now. Okay, but how do you fix it, though? That's the big thing. How does Disney fix this problem? How do they dig them? How do they get themselves out of this hole that they've kind of dug for themselves? Okay. I think that basically what Disney needs to do right now is a two prong approach with the Galactic Star Cruiser. Number one, short term. Okay, let's focus on the short term. So what Disney needs to do is focus on the short term, which would be basically stop the bleeding. <laughs> okay, stop people from canceling the reservations. Um, get more people on board, re reserving rooms, things like that. So how do you do that? Well, I think the number one way you do that is lower the price. The biggest problem, the, the biggest sticking point, I think, for most fans in regards to the Galactic Star Cruiser is the price point. And here's the thing. This experience is, is, is kind of priced more in line with a Disney cruise. And I think that's the problem. OK, I think what they need to do is cut the pricing down quite a bit and have it more comparable to maybe like their Disney hotels. You know, even if you charge a thousand or even fifteen hundred dollars a night, which is still pretty expensive. But even if you did that, it would still be cheaper than what they're charging now, a lot cheaper. And I think that you would bring more people in, even if people feel like the experience might not be top notch i think more people would be opt to reserving rooms and, and 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 at least giving it a chance if it was a little more affordable and the way to do that is abandon the cruise line pricing and go more towards the hotel pricing and make it more in line with your disney hotels i think that's really a great short term kind of stop the bleeding sort of fix in the short term okay now the second uh the second prong approach to fixing the Galactic Star Cruiser. And this is more long-term. This is a, definitely a long-term thing. Once you stop the bleeding, once you lower the price, you start to get people back reserving rooms and what have you, then when you, what you want to do is you want to focus on the long-term. Now, what you want to do with the long-term is go in there and start to look at the areas that fans are complaining about. Okay. A lot of fans, look, 
there's a lot of hyperbole out there with, with this experience and people saying the whole thing is just, is just crap. And that's just not true. There are elements of this experience that look pretty dope. Okay. I think that whole little lounge area where the, where the, where the, where the, uh, the lounge singer was kind of singing in that, in that promotional piece looks very star Wars, that bar loungy area looked pretty cool, but there are areas like the bridge where you, where you go into light speed that look very, very janky and very cheap. So I think what Disney needs to do is they need to sort of address these problem areas and make them a little more fleshed out, add more detail, throw some more money into it. Look, Filoni, Dave Filoni, and uh, John Favreau, I, you know, if I was Disney, I would bring those two on board and 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 have them like walk through the hotel and and, and, and kind of give notes, you know, and 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 advise Disney Imagineering on what they need to kind of add or take away or plus. I think Filoni and Favreau, they're fans of this franchise. They understand the fandom. Um, they're very much in in tune with the fandom, and I think their feedback on this hotel would be immensely, immensely valuable. I think they I think they should do that. Absolutely. But that's more of a long-term thing. Once you stop the bleeding, lower the prices, get people back into reserving rooms, then you can bring in Filoni and Favreau and sort of ha address these long-term issues and, and, and kind of um, plus and throw a little more money into some of the experiences, some of the aesthetics, okay? Another thing that I would do is look, this is this is basically tailored like a cruise. So when you when you when you reserve your room, you're there for like two or three days. So Disney can really control the experience that you have on the Galactic Star Cruiser. One big thing that I would do that I think would, would be hugely popular with fans, as a huge Star Wars fan myself, is start to kind of create itineraries. And what I mean by that is, is like have like a three-night cruise that focuses around the original trilogy. So you book this three night stay at the galactic star cruiser and it's all centered around the original trilogy. So Luke, Leia, Chewie, R2 it's in that world. So the older, Disney, you know, the older star Wars fans like myself, they'd be more drawn to that because a lot of the older star Wars fans, the OG star Wars fans are not really into the sequel trilogy. This would be a cool way to bring those older fans on board right? And have that like Luke Skywalker moment, that Princess Leia moment. I think that would be pretty, pretty cool. And you can do this with everything. Even Mandalorian. <laughs> Even Mandalorian. You can have an itinerary where you're in the, like, the Mandalorian kind of timeline or, or, or environment. You can have a, a, a Grogu meet and greet and things like that. A Mando meet and greet and everything revolving around, around the Mandalorian show. OK, you can even do a sequel trilogy itinerary where you go for two or three days and it's all about Ray, Finn, Poe, Kylo Ren, you know. So this is what I would do. I would create special kind of itineraries focused on certain, uh, you know, aspects of the of the franchise, whether they be the original trilogy, Mandalorian. You can even do tie ins to like Book of Boba Fett, but have it very specific. Right. Have it very specific for various eras of Star Wars. I think that would be enormously popular, enormously popular. It would really open it up. This was one of the biggest complaints when it con when it came to Galaxy's Edge, that it was too laser focused on one part of the Star Wars timeline. If you can open that up with with this Galactic Star Cruiser and create various itineraries of various eras of Star Wars, I think that would go a long way. I think fans would eat that up, would eat it up. Can you imagine going on a on a three night cruise and it's all based and centered around the original trilogy? I think that would be pretty dope. But I think a lot of fans would, would really be into that. OK, so that's more of a long term thing. Right. And you're going to have to fix up some of the aesthetics. Some of the aesthetics like that bridge area that we saw in that promotional video wasn't really up to par. You have to kind of really Star Wars this stuff up a little bit aesthetically. OK, and that's going to cost that's going to cost Disney a little bit to kind of spruce this stuff up. But this is long term. and I think they really need to do that. I think they do. So that's my approach to fixing the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser short term. 
you want to lower the prices. You want to get the price points down to like what you would have for like a Disney hotel as opposed to a Disney cruise. Get the pricing down. OK, that will stop the bleeding and people will be more opt to reserving those rooms. But then the long term, you want to focus on sprucing up the aesthetics, adding more detail, throwing more money into the experiences, creating those different timeline itineraries that I talked about. And I think I think that if you did those things, bring in Favreau, bring in Filoni, let them give Imagineers a little, you know, some feedback, some notes. I think you could save the Galactic Star Creature. Look, this is too much of an investment for Disney for them to just completely abandon it. They got to fix it. They got to fix it. Okay. So these, I think this is the best way to do it in my opinion. But hey, if you guys have more ideas on how to fix it short term and long term, I would love to hear from you. Comment down below with all your ideas. Also, just a reminder, check out the Fresh Bake podcast starring Ron Burner. Link down below. It's a great podcast. I really enjoy his insight and the conversation that him and Dave have. It's really a lot of fun. Check them out. They, they do great, great work. But thank you all so, so much for watching another episode of OG55. And as always, may the force be with you. Mm -hmm.